Welcome to the Oak and Smoke Whiskey Reviews. My name is Brent. If you are a subscriber, I thank you so much for your support. And this is your first time visiting the channel and you're into whiskey and whiskey type related stuff, please consider hitting that subscribe button with a notification bell. That way you'll be notified of new uploads and live streams. All right guys, first things first, let's drink a little bit of whiskey. Cheers. All right, what is an infinity bottle? An infinity bottle is your personal blend, something you've created. Now there are some do's and don'ts for sure. And we're gonna go through those in the video, but first things first, you need to pick out a bottle. Now in picking out a bottle, it needs to be something that you really like. It's your infinity blend. Pick out something that you like. It can be a decanter or a used bottle. That's what I've been, that's what I did. I got a bottle I thought was cool. I really think the peerless bottling's cool. This is a peerless two year rye bottling. And it has a synthetic cork. Something to think about. Synthetic corks are definitely durable, more durable than just your average standard cork, cork bottling, or cork top, I should say. It's a little more durable, and this is an infinity bottle that you can continue to add to the blend. So it's gonna be around for an infinite amount of time, so you might wanna think about having a nice cork. Now, today, I'm gonna to be making a bourbon blend. It is gonna have a little bit of rye in it, but that's what we're gonna get into, some do's and don'ts. When you're making your infinity bottle, you wanna be real careful on rye and peated scotch. I'm not saying don't put them in there, it's your blend, but I'm saying if you do put them in, be very aware of how dominant of a grain rye is and how strong and overbearing, and especially peat smoke. Peat smoke will override almost anything. You put a little bit of peat smoke in an infinity bottle, it's definitely gonna be overbearing, and unless that's what you like. It's your bottle, but what I'm saying is, be aware of peated, peated scotches and rye whiskeys when you're making your blend. Let's get into the blend. And these are all bottles that I keep in stock, uh, most of them anyway. I've got a couple in here that they're just about empty, so I'm gonna put them in the bottle anyway. First things first, funnel is definitely optional, but it makes it for a lot neater, a neater experience. And this is a cute little funnel my wife got me, but it kind of fits pretty good and kind of glad she got it. But anyway, this here is the Elijah Craig Small Batch. Definitely one that I keep in the bar. And a lot of these whiskeys that I'm gonna be putting in here today, not all of them, but most, I just restocked my bar. And they're ones that I keep around the house for company guests. Being a whiskey enthusiast, you have company come over. Most of you guys are aware. I'm sure a lot of you guys are whiskey enthusiasts also. People wanna drink whiskey. So a lot of these are whiskeys that I just keep on hand for guests. And a lot of them are great beginner whiskeys, just like this one right here, the Elijah Craig Small Batch. It's going in the bottle. There we go. Let's put all that in there. There wasn't much left. And I have just replaced this bottle. This is one that I always keep. I keep this one on deck. It's just a good, solid pour of whiskey at a great price. Elijah Craig Small Batch down. Now this one here, this one here is a new, the new Baker's Single Barrel. I haven't had this bottle that long, but it is a pretty popular new release. And I have sent out a lot of samples of this one. And like I said, I have company that comes over and they're all wanting to try something new. And this one's kind of easily replaced for me. I live so close to Kentucky. So it's, it's really nothing over the top. And it, I actually think this is a great pour. Real, really, really good pour of whiskey. It's going into the infinity bottle. And, and I, I didn't put, I haven't put any rye in yet. I will probably put it in towards the last. I'm gonna put a little bit of rye in here. But um, like I said, once again, I'm not, I'm, this is just a bourbon, pretty much bourbon infinity bottle. Um, and you can create your own how you want. This one's mine, so I'm, I'm just gonna make it in a bourbon one. I used to, when I make infinity bottles, I will usually make a scotch one separate from my bourbon, but you can do however you like. Do however you want, this is your blend. There's no really right or wrong way. Just remember once again, when you're dealing with rye or peated scotches, you really wanna watch what you're doing unless you make, wanna make a peated blend. 
But all right, let's get into this one right here, Noah's Mill. A lot of people like it, a lot of people don't. I personally like it. It is just a little bit left in this bottle, and I'm kind of glad because it is very cinnamon forward. Very cinnamon forward whiskey. And that's something else that when you're making your infinity bottle, you know your whiskey, you know what you like. And I don't really like just cinnamon bombs. And this one here, it, it's it's borderline pushing the limits of a cinnamon bomb. But it's going in right here. A little bit of Noah's Mill. That bottle is down. All right. Now we'll put in the Bell Mead. Another great, I think, a great beginner's whiskey. Not super complex, very approachable whiskey. And around here, I don't know about everywhere, I can get this pretty easily for around 30, 35 bucks. Not a big purchase, very affordable. One I keep on deck at the house all the time. Going in the bottle. All right. There we go. Bell Mead down, bottle down. I thought about doing like a bottle kill night to get rid of these, but I, there's no way. It would be a four hour live stream and I wouldn't make it through it. But anyway, this here, I think is a great way when you do have it, a large stock of whiskey and you keep whiskey, keep whiskey in your house, especially for guests, just your nothing real over the top rare whiskeys. I'm not saying that, but I think it's a good way to preserve your whiskey and just do something creative with what you, your bottles that are running low and getting ready to go bad. The, these here, uh, they, there's no way that I could drink all these by myself in the next three months. It just isn't happening. And this is a way to preserve it and keep it from going bad. All right, the next one I'm gonna put in is this right here, High West American Prairie Bourbon. Very good pour, very affordable once again. The, I don't know if you can get this one everywhere. I'm pretty sure their distribution is very good right now. And when they first come out, their distribution was kind of shoddy and not and all over the place. But this one right here, another easily ready available whiskey that uh, it's 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 another good one. A very I think it's a great beginner's bourbon, very light, approachable whiskey. Another one I keep around the house for guests and a cool bottle. This here one I think would make an excellent infinity bottle. All right, now let's get into this right here. This one here I have had for quite some time. This is the Henry McKenna 10 year. A lot of controversy over this one. That, all that being put aside, just an excellent, great pour of whiskey. I remember when you could get this for around 20, 25 bucks now, $40 is considered a good deal on this whiskey right now. But it is going in the infinity bottle. Might save a pour of this one for later for myself. All right, little Henry McKenna. All right. Next pour we got, I'm gonna go ahead and put my rye in. And like I said, this one here, I chose this rye just because it drinks so unlike a lot of rye. It's not overly sweet, very approachable rye whiskey. I love this one. I keep this one on deck at the house at all times. And it's not, it's not a huge, overbearing, overly sweet rye or an aggressive rye. Very approachable, very well-balanced rye whiskey. Put just a dash of this in there. All right, a little bit of rye. All right, next whiskey we're gonna get into is this right here, the Joseph Magnus. I've already bought a replacement of this one because guys, I absolutely love this pour. Very, very fruity, unique, complex pour of whiskey. And this one's here I've had for a while. We're gonna put it in the infinity bottle, make this blend just a little bit more interesting. Go ahead and get a little bit of that in there. All right, there we go. Joseph Magnus, just about down. All right. And when you are creating your infinity bottle, once again, I can't stress this enough, it is your infinity bottle. But I feel like 
it, when you're going into this, especially, there is quite a bit of whiskey here and you're gonna make a complete bottle of something that involves a little bit of money, you don't wanna ruin it by putting an overly peated scotch in it, unless you're just really into peated scotch, which I am myself, but put adding, to me personally, adding a peated scotch to this uh, would, would kind of throw it off. It would be something that's just out of balance in this blend. All right, we're gonna add some Booker's to this blend. This is the Booker's 2017 Tommy's Batch. Had this one a while, hasn't been open forever, but it has been open, I guess, for probably about a year now. I'm gonna put a little bit of that in the blend. All right, we're just about done here. Add a little bit of Blanton's. You gotta have some, I mean, the Blanton's is really not that hard to get right here in Southern Indiana. I'm about 20 minutes from Kentucky. Really, really not that hard to get. So as far as it being a super rare, allocated hard whiskey to get, yeah, you still gotta look for it, but it's pretty, it's, it's nothing really all that hard to find if you're looking around here. A little bit of Blanton's in there. Save a little bit of that, I guess. So I wanna put a little bit of this in there also. A little bit of the Blood Oath Packed Five. Gotta give it something, make it something a little bit nice because I am gonna be giving away a couple samples of this. All right, there we go. This one here, this one here, uh, it's very, it's, it's, it's a nice, complex whiskey. I'm not gonna say very complex because I don't think it's super complex. It's a very nice balance. It has some complexity to it. And I've gave out a tremendous amount of samples of this. I had this one just about a year also, but I've gave away or sent out and shared a bunch of whiskey with, with some friends and people in the whiskey community. And guys, uh, that's what it's all about. It's all about sharing. Here goes in some Blood Oath. All right. One little dash of Michter's in there. Little dash of Michter's and we will call this an infinity bottle. All right, one more little sip of whiskey here, guys. Cheers. Michter's, small, small batch Kentucky straight bourbon. This here, also another one I keep at the house. Very approachable, nice beginner whiskey. I, I really enjoy it. Nice, nice pour. Top this Infinity bottle off with the Michters right here. There we go. Michters in the bottle. Nice blend. Thank my wife very much for this cute little funnel right there. But anyway, that's an Infinity bottle. Now, the dues in maintaining this. Okay, let's get into the maintaining part of your Infinity bottle. You don't want to go drinking this much of your infinity be infinity bottle in an afternoon. You can, you can do whatever you want, but if you want it to last and be an infinite bottle of whiskey, which is supposed to be, I wouldn't recommend going probably past here before I start adding something to it. It's something you continue to add to. It's 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 your infinity bottle. Do how you do how you like with it, do whatever you want with it, but as far as maintaining it, I me personally, I probably wouldn't go past this level right here before I start adding some more whiskey to it. That way it cuts down on oxidization and stuff like that. I hope this video was helpful. I cannot stress enough. It's your blend, make your blend how you want. It's your infinity bottle, but be aware of rise and peated scotches because they could take over your blend. Also, if you're using whiskeys that have done open up nicely, got some oxidization, I probably wouldn't go past around a quarter of a bottle before I start refilling, just so the whiskey doesn't get over oxidized and go bad. Another thing I wanna stress is the cork. This is an inf infinity bottle. It's gonna be around for an infinite amount of time. Make sure you have a nice, durable cork on your bottle. Now let's get into how you can win a sample of this. One, subscribe to the channel, and when you do, make sure you subscribe while you're logged in. That way I can check and make sure you are a subscriber and answer this question correctly in the comments below. What bottle did I use for my infinity bottle? 
Now, on February 15th, I will pin up a new review as I do every Saturday, and I will announce the winner, the winners, on February 15th. Thanks for watching, guys. Going to wrap this one up. If you are a subscriber, I thank you once again for your support. And if you're not a subscriber, hey, subscribe. Until next time, guys. Cheers.